Okay, this is the second part of the video. So at this stage, I want to go carefully over the thing again. What I have is um, a really colorful, very dynamic piece of work, uh, but I want to put some manners on it now, okay? So I'm gonna go over it all. I'm going to refine certain sections. If the values aren't quite right, I'm going to fix that. Um, I want to keep the intensity of the color and I want to keep that sort of vibrant, dynamic quality to it. So. I might, I can start anywhere. Let's start maybe in the sky, okay? So, I've got beautiful intense colours, but when I look at the photo, it's a lot more subtle. So I want to try and soften that transition. Now, softening a transition is easy. We just get an appropriate brush, which has got orange on it, and I'm just softening the area where those two meet. Not adding any more paint on, just working with what I have. I've got a blank edge over here. Let's look at what happens. Well, it gets very, very light up in the up towards the sky there. So it might be worth adding a little bit more white paint. And as we add more white, it gets thicker and thicker. We can see that really lifts the entire painting because it sets the very light end. This is setting sort of the dark end of the spectrum. This is setting that light end. I should call it a value scale, not a spectrum. Okay. What else is going on in that sky? Well, it all sort of pulls down to this golden sort of ball of sun there. Um, it's coming just above the orange section. So instead of just throwing a blob of yellow in, I'm going to go in gradually as a sort of halo effect. So I'm putting a bit of yellow into my orange. Adding the paint. has to be thicker than the paint underneath. I'm adding a bit more yellow and a bit more white. So what we're doing here is building up to what we call impasto. Okay, into that sec central section and feathering the edges out. Up with a, another blob of white. And I would say that's just about enough there. Let's come down now and look at this section of cloud in the distance. I think mine is a little bit too purple, so I'm just going to pull it back slightly. Not with the same brush. There's too much orange on that, I think. I'm going to get another brush. A little bit of blue into my purple. And pull it a little towards orange. So it's one of those difficult grayed down colors, okay? And again, I'm going to integrate it into that orange by blending the two. And what looked like two completely unnatural colors that didn't work together work absolutely fine once you create a good soft blend between them. Um, let's cut down a little bit. I think the value of this is too light. It needs to be a little bit darker. So again, I'm going to go back in. Let's look at that green again. So it was in the distance. So let's take a little bit of uh, the um, cobalt turquoise. And that's much better. It's still reading as now as um, sort of land in the distance. It's got a slight tint of green to it, but it's also got some of the orange and some of this sort of lilac-y purple in it. And it fades out over on this side. So now I think I need to darken these a little bit. So Let's go back which, to our middle green, which was adding a little bit of cerulean into it. Test it. And it's come down in value. You might want to go a little bit further. I'm keeping it in cool, cool greens.
you can see the way I'm using the brush as well to sort of mimic the the all the trees down there in the woods. Okay, these come forward and now I can put the trees over the lake there. If I do it once, then the paint underneath doesn't get mixed up too much. If I keep going over it, I, a few things happen. I lose the character of the brush mark, the character of the paint. Everything gets dulled down and pushed into the canvas a little bit too much. So coming forward, I'm going to look at the pattern as well of these, um, of these uh, trees. As they come forward, they're getting darker and they're getting greener, so they're picking up yellow. Now, a little word on colour and value here. If I take my dark blue and I want to make a dark green, that yellow is opaque, so it's going to pull the value up all the time. So if I go for this transparent Indian yellow, or you might have um, a little touch of yellow ochre, I mix that in. It should make a really deep green, okay? So I'm starting down here again because the deepest greens are over here. And then I'm coming back up as it picks up the, underla the underlayer, it starts to become lighter. And this Brush number two is perfect for sort of mimicking all those trees with just a few marks. So sort of one mark for each tree. Now, I'm not going back grabbing a massive big blob of paint into the distance because it would conflict with that sense of aerial perspective. Just gradually retreating back. What else can I do? Well, I can start to look at some of the other greens in there. Um, within this section here, there's also a sort of middle value green, which is quite intense, very, very neutral. So I'm going to try and do that with my cobalt and yellow. Just tone it down with a little bit of the ultramarine. And I should get a fairly intense green that's somewhere between the dark green and the light yellowish green. Try and put it on with one brush mark. So what we do is turn the brush to enable more paint to be available on the brush. We also make sure there's plenty of paint on the brush, first of all. In this section here, if you look at the photo, it gets a little lighter. I need it to stand out and it's not standing out at the moment, so I need to do something to it. The first thing you'd want to do maybe is to add white to lighten it, but we've got two opaque colors here so I can use those as well so let's try first of all instead of just jumping into the white let's try a little bit of cobalt turquoise the idea being as this color recedes it gets lighter and cooler so let's try a little bit yes it does work So we're creating variation and contrast in the foreground here. I think that's probably enough for section two. Um, we're going in section three to really start to look at the subtle um, little accents and details and finishing touches in this.